Hello and welcome to Better Geology. I'm Andrew Dunning, and I'm at Petroglyph Point in Lava Beds National Monument in California. Lava Beds National Monument is famous for its lava tubes, which have been previously featured on Better Geology, but it is also important as an area of cultural history. Petroglyph Point holds one of the largest concentrations of rock-carving petroglyphs in California, and as such it is an important site for the cultural history of the Modoc people, which have inhabited this basin for over 6,000 years. Petroglyph Point itself is a part of the larger Prisoner's Rock Formation, which is a tuff cone formed in a volcanic eruption 275,000 years ago. A tuff cone is what happens when magma meets water. This whole basin was once filled with ancient Lake Modoc, a pluvial lake that filled the entire basin in the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs. Thule Lake and Klamath Lake are two small remnants of this once vast inland body of water. The lake itself was formed when the south draining outlet for the basin was blocked by lava flows from the colossal Medicine Lake volcano, and for many, many millennia it filled up until eventually overtopping near modern-day Klamath Falls and draining the lake sometime after the end of the last ice age. Since this basin was filled with water and the Medicine Lake volcano and many other volcanic sources existed in this area, it was only a matter of time until some of this magma from underground interacted with the lake water. And when that eventually happened, about 275,000 years ago, we got a large series of tuff rings and tuff cones that formed islands in Lake Modoc. When the basaltic magma interacted with the water as it rose to the surface, the water flashed into steam, sending shards of lava and rock and a volcanic ash into the sky. As you approach the sides of the rock itself, you can begin to see these diagonal bedding structures. As this slurry fountain of lava and ash and water was erupting from the ground, it laid out everything in a conical, uh, sort of diagonally sloping pile. These small beds of material are made of volcanic glass, volcanic ash, cinders, lapilli, and all manner of volcanic debris, including pieces of pre-existing rock. The structures themselves are quite clear if you get up close to the rock, but it also reflects just how soft this is. The softness of the rock is what made it such a great location for carving of petroglyphs by the ancient Modoc, but unfortunately makes them susceptible to erosion, time, and unfortunately vandalism. Today the rock is weathered into a pattern called tifoni, which is marked by these uh, sort of oddly shaped cavities. And it's these holes that lead to the striking and unique appearance of this rock. Prisoner's Rock itself and Petroglyph Point are bounded on two sides, the east side and the west side, by tall vertical cliffs as high as 250 meters. Now these cliffs uh, are formed by wave action. At the time of the volcanic eruption, and until comparatively recently in historical times, Prisoner's Rock and the peninsula were islands in a vast lake called Thule Lake, which was drained in 1906 to make room for farmland. This lake was quite shallow in modern times, and it allowed the ancient Modoc to row out to these islands in canoes to carve their important cultural symbols on the rock itself, which is very soft and easy to carve. The ground around the base of Petroglyph Point is solid rock. It's what's called a wave-cut platform. Over the many hundreds of thousands of years since this rock was formed by those volcanic eruptions, wave action from the shallow lake eventually eroded the sides of Prisoner's Rock to create these steep vertical cliffs, as well as a comparatively smooth and level floor. This floor makes walking very easy, and is one of the more interesting and striking features of hiking around Petroglyph Point. Many ancient lake levels, both of Lake Modoc and Thule Lake, are visible along the base and sides of Prisoner's Rock and the peninsula. The small overhanging area where many of the petroglyphs are hosted are reflective of times when the lake was uh, very persistent at that level and carved away more into the soft rock. Petroglyphs are found at different levels along the base of Prisoner's Rock and Petroglyph Point, which reflects times when the lake was higher level and the ancient Modoc, who were floating in canoes when they were carving, were able to carve either higher or lower on the rock as lake levels fluctuated through time. The petroglyphs left behind by the ancient Modoc are one of the most visible remains of this culture, which inhabited this basin for over 6,000 years, until they were forcibly removed in the late 1870s in what are called the Modoc Wars. Respecting the cultural remains of this important and thriving culture are very important to appreciating the history of the land we inhabit. This has been Better Geology. I'm Andrew Dunning. Thank you very much for watching.